YouTube. This is Simon Terry from Simon HD Gaming, bringing you part one of my Legend of Zelda um, Majora's Mask Let's Play. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll mind you at the end. Okay, in this part, we are going to be transformed into Deku Link, and then we are going to free ourselves from that transform. It will take approximately 30 minutes, but so you don't get turned off by a long video, um, I will put the chapters in the description so you know which part is, you know, a significant event. So, like, when I acquire a moon tier or something, that's what I'll do on the longer videos. On the shorter ones, they're only, like, 20 minutes. There's no point in putting chapters in, so I'm not going to bother. I've actually been debating doing this Let's Play for a while now, because I just haven't had the time. But now I've got the time, so I can do it. I always find this part really creepy. You know, when you're a child, I played this game that came out back in 2000, and this game really fucking creeped me the fuck out of this part. You know, fresh off the bat, wanting a new fucking Zelda game to play, this one cropped up, and so I thought, oh, you know what, fuck it, I'll get this game, and I played it for the first time. I was, bearing in mind at this point, I was only five. And this part really fucked me over. It really creeped me the fuck out. And I actually didn't fully complete this game until 2007. Because until that point, I just could never sit through it. Every time I would get to Great Bay and I would just rage. I think a couple of times I made it to Stone Tower and at that point I fucking flipped. I could not complete the game. It just pissed me the fuck off every time. I think in total I've gone through this game three times. That's it. Out of the, what, 13 years I've played it. That's it, Link. Come on, fuck him up. See, unlike in Ocarina of Time, this game throws you straight in. It doesn't, like, have such a calm beginning. It throws you directly into the game. You're not spending, like, half an hour defeating, going through the Deku Tree, where, literally, you've got no action. This game throws you straight in, which is what I love about it. Not just that, compared to Ocarina of Time, this is my favourite Zelda game of all time, no doubt about it. Even though it is a piss take, I fucking love it. Its soundtrack is amazing, its mechanics are amazing, its refined mechanics are, are amazing. Its original graphics compared to Ocarina of Time are amazing. What they did with a smaller team, this is probably the, one of the most depressive games I've ever played. Well, other than Kingdom Hearts 2, that game is pretty damn depressive, but... I mean... Whoa, that was my fail. <laughs> Look at how he jumps as well, he can fucking do it like a front flip, he can do side flips. I think that's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> Although I guarantee at some point or another I will die of my own accord, unlike in Ocarina of Time where I glitch death. Um, this one I will die a few times, especially in Stone Tower, because Stone Tower takes a fucking piss with the mini boss.
unlike Ganondorf, this guy is actually intimidating. Because you know he actually has some real power to fuck you over with. Unlike Ganondorf, who you play fucking tennis with. The funny thing is, a lot of people have criticised the three day system in this game. I actually love that system. Because it makes, you know, you know, like, oh shit, I've got this amount of time to complete this. Fuck, how the fuck am I going to do it? That's what they put it in there for, to test Zelda gamers' abilities. And to see how many at the time new players could stomach the game. But no, you've got all these assholes who slate the system. They say that this is probably the worst Zelda game in the series. Well, it isn't. It's probably the best. To me, it's the best anyway. Yeah, it does have, like, only four temples. But the amount of side quests it has are unbelievable. There's quite a lot of masks to get as well. Which hopefully I will be picking up every mask. Um, so I can get Fierce Deity. I might not because I'll be tempted to use that in the final boss battle. And I want to do the final battle um, just with normal Link. Because with Fierce Deity the battle takes all of about 30 seconds. For each form you just literally rape. And it's just fucking ridiculous. So I probably won't be getting all the masks to get Fierce Deity at the beginning. I'll probably do that after the final but... And of course, it's just like on Creative Time, you get a fucking fairy who follows you, who constantly says, Link, Link, listen. Fuck that shit. Okay, so let's get some rupees. Fuck. Let's open the door. Wee. The funny thing is, Tao used to be like one of School Kid's right hand people or well, fairies. And she just literally betrays him two minutes after he left her. That's kind of fucking funny. Okay, so this is a good ability to stack you, Link. You get to just go, go inside flowers and do this. Float above everything fucking else, which is pretty cool. Well, only for a limited time, of course. You can open this chest if you want, it only contains Deku Nuts. Which, like, as Deku Link, if you use them whilst flying, you, like, drop them like a fucking nuke, and you just stun everything in the vicinity. It's pretty cool. Right, this part always used to get me. You go around this tree to here. Oh shit, am I gonna make it? Yep. Cool. It's like a dead tree. It's a fucked up inbred tree. Just fucking leave it alone. Oh my god, best song ever. The song of healing. I think this game contains a lot of my favourite, like, sort of like Zelda music melodies, if you want to call them that. Like, you know, you've got Ocarina of these two games, the flute in A Link to the Past, uh, the baton in Wind Waker, the fucking grass in Twilight Princess. You know, it contains my favourite tunes, stuff like Elegy of Emptiness, Song of Healing, um, The Oath to Water.
<laughs> and I don't know why, but this guy to me just looks like a complete fucking pedophile. <laughs> to me, he just looks like Jimmy Savile. That's who he looks like to me. Oh, little dicko leg, let me fuck you in the butthole. Mate, your fish bullet swat, mate. Mate, you're a fucking cunt, mate. Basically, the whole game is revolved around you getting Majora's Mask back from the school kid and giving it to him within three days. What you don't realise is until you're in game is that three days goes by pretty fucking quickly. But the first objective you have is to get um, your ocarina back from the school kid. Which actually isn't hard at all. It's not hard to do. Um, that's what we'll be doing in this part, is returning back to normal, which you need. And you're it is fucking simple, I'll show you the quickest way to do it, you know, where you're going. Just literally the game throws you in and you've got no idea what the fuck you're doing. But with me guiding you, you will. Right, first of all, you don't want to go there first. Because you're just going to end up backtracking anyway. Fuck off, you cunt! Okay. You want to come up here? Because the ferry's been split into loads of separate ferries, and the ferry that split is here. So, that's the one ferry you needed. Okay, now, fuck you, doggy. You want to come up here and up here to the North Clock Town. Now you want to come up here into this cavern thing. This leads to the Great Fairies um, Sanctuary. Well, fountain. I'm going to skip a lot of the text, because the text really, at this point, is inconsequential. I mean... From what you can gather, obviously, you know what I'm going to do, so... And obviously, like, this game, in a lot of regards, is a lot similar to Ocarina of Time. But if you're wondering about the four temples like I talked about earlier on, like what element they are, for example, on Korea Time, you've got grass, fire, water, shadow, and spirit. In this game, you have, um, well, forest, um, ice, water, and earth, if you want to call them element wise. Sorry if I sound a bit messed as well, I've got a bit of a cold. So, next part. So what are usually do the blasting magic to defeat this balloon. And you want to talk to this gun. Right, this is what you need to do. You have to do this to progress. Um, 
You have to find all five of these cuts. They're not hard to find. They're not hard to catch either. Although sometimes they do run off a bit, which makes it a bit fucking hard, but... The best way to do it is to spin at them. Like that. So you want to go to, I think this is west of East Clocktown. Yeah, he's got a See, when you come here, you see one getting on a chicken. Got him. Okay, now the next one, you have to use the stecky flower. Oh, get in the flower. Get up here. He would jump off. And I hate it when they do this. Now he's going to run me out of the fucking guard. Now I'll go wait for it to come back out. He hides in a box. I just saw him. What a fucking retard. Okay, so the next part. What we have to do is go back through South Clock Town. Oh, fuck. Keeping it in Z by accident. You up. The good thing about this game is when you um, go back to day one, because you have to, um, you lose everything, your rupees and your items, like, you know, all your arrows and shit. But in this game, you get a fucking bank, where you can bank all your rupees, so it's kind of fucking cool. Okay, there we go. Right, you need to remember the number code. Three, four, five, two, one. And before you start to ask yourself, yes, you have to do this on fucking Z button, damn it. Um, yes, you have to fucking do this. Because you get an item from the hideout, which is what you need. Three, four, five, two, one. If you complete that, like, the bomber shit again when you're a human. Um, well, Hylian, should I say? Um, you get the bomber's notebook, which keeps track of certain side quests and what you've done. That way you know what you've done, so you don't go back and, you know, forget. Which is kind of cool, considering there's quite a few side quests. Oh, shit. Yeah, bitch. Fuck you, meat. Okay, so you just come to the car. And there is a giant bump balloon thing again. Blow it up. Open those pots if you want to. It'll just contain magic, uh, like a green rupee and some hearts. So hit the chat, hit the thing, so you get a few rupees. Nothing to really brag about. Go here and talk to the observer. I basically um, touch to look in the telescope, and what you do is you look and look to the top of the clock tower and zoom, and you'll see the school kid. And then looks at the moon, and a moon tear will drop. Funny thing, he knows you're watching him. That's what I don't understand. Look, they see also guys standing up there.
Okay, so now we're done, we want to go through this door and collect the moon stair. It has no real use other than what we're about to use it for. I suppose you could get another one later if you wanted to. Um, I mean, just to put it in your inventory, but that's all it's good for. So. Now, to speed things along, you want to go and talk to this guy. Right, shall we... Oh, fuck. Hit no. Basically, if you keep on... Um, Saying yes to this guy, he'll make time pass, which you need it to go to the night of the third day. It has to go to the night of the third day, because it's the only time where you can get the Ocarina back. And if you wait, it can take a while. Yep. So just keep on dancing until he disappears. He will go when it hits night of the third day. Keep dancing. I mean, this scarecrow is only useful at this point for, like, changing what time you're in. Because when you get the ocarina back, um, you can fast forward time, slow down time, and reverse time, so... Keep dancing. Kind of cool, he uses um, the Lost Wood song. Final day, 24 hours remaining. Okay, so, uh, yep, this is the final time you dance. This part really won't take too long, because I mean, now we are literally just five minutes away from the end of this part. Okay, now that he's gone, right, we have until um, the moon gets to the middle of it. That's when you only have a certain amount of time left to get to the Eye of the Carnival and defeat, well, get your Karina back from Majora. Okay, so now we've got the moon's tear. Uh, let's put it there. Right, before you do anything else as well, um, you might want to bank what money you do have. I mean, 30 rupees doesn't really seem like a lot, but, I mean, it all adds up in your bank. When you reach 200 rupees, you get the larger bag. When you reach 500, you get the bigger bag, so it's all worth it. Skip his text. Now, don't worry, he will see you, like, if you go back to him with any form, um... He will know who you are. So it doesn't matter whether you're Deku, Garun, Zora, or Human. Well, Hylian. It, um, it doesn't really matter. So you come here to continue. And a giant Deku businessman will come down. Q. 
okay, so you can talk to me if you want, and you give him the moon's tear. Now we have the deed to the um, land. You need this because you need to get up to the eye of the carnival, which is just above where you came out of the first door. There, where the piece of art is. That's the eye of the carnival where you have to go to get your ocarina back. Unfortunately, we're a little bit early. Not much, four hours early. Okay, so to make time go a little bit quicker, I'm going to go get some more rupees quick. Oh, other side. This contains 50, I think. So I'm going to quickly bank these. Deposit. Damn, said button. Fuck off. Classic control I'm using on my Nintendo Wii to play this at the moment is really fucking bugging out. When I record the next set of parts, I'm gonna have to change the controller over because it's pissing me off. Right, we just wait here. It doesn't take too long, it takes about. Whoa, we've got about a minute left until it hits 12 and the eye of the carnival opens. Fuck off, Tattle, you cunt. Fucking piece of shit. Okay. So the Ivor Carnival's now open. Okay, so now you see the tower at the bottom, you have all of six minutes to get your ocarina back. Mountain, ocean, canyon. Hurry, the four who were there, bring them here. That has like, you know, that's basically what you go out set to do. Bring the four who are there. Okay, so what you have to do is just use your bubble and he will drop your ocarina. 
can temporarily stun him. But you can't hit him again though. He just avoids it. Just don't get your upper out. Now I don't know why, but this is the only scene in the game where you see Zelda. You don't see her any other time. Which is kind of pointless because it's called Legend of Zelda. I like it, but like, it's just really weird. Oh, fuck. Oops. But unlike in um, Ocarina of Time, this song plays more of a significant role. I mean, you need it to reverse time back to, um, you know, the first day. So, you need the song. So, basically, what you want to do is you want to get the ocarina out. And I don't know why, but you now have Deku Pipes. Each mask, like, that transforms your form, has a different instrument. Save return to dawn of the first day. So that also saves your game, which is really cool. But the saving on this game does suck a bit, because the, there's only two ways to save. Um, you either return to the first day, or you can stay at your current time and hit an owl statue. But those statues are in selective locations. Like right before temples, and in the main, like, cities, if you want to call them that. They're the only times you will see them, so it's kind of annoying. There's none around Terminal Field, so... So we're almost at the end of this part. Master said if you get back the precious thing that was stolen from you, he could return to normal. Yep, so we get the mass salesman to return us to normal, and then we save it, and that's the part done. So you want to go back through the door, and talk to him. Now he practically rapes you with some giant fucking ten foot piano. And now you have some kind of like spaz attack and return to normal.
Funny thing is, he's been tortured by turning into a deck. He's just like waving it goodbye. Like he's taunting it. Also, you get to keep the mask to transform into Deku anytime you want, so. Or since you don't have Majora's Mask, he goes to the fucking mad one. Basically, it just tells you that it's um, an ancient mask that was used in hexing rituals and it contains a very evil power. The mask overcame the ancient tribe and they banished it into the darkness. But the stupid salesman went and found the fucking thing and caused this entire string of events. Like a complete douchebag. So, we now have to go and fix the mess he made. If the mask is allowed to roam free, it will literally destroy the world. Okay, so this part's about to end. Now we are li normal Link again. Um, we're just going to save it, and then that'll be the end of the part. <laughs> this is how you save other ways, too. Anyway, this has been CyberTerra from CyberHD Gaming, bringing you part one of my Let's Play of Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.